This is the Chameleon LEFS 8010 lightweight NFED sloper antenna. This high performance NFED antenna will give you coverage all the way down to the 80 meter band. I recently had it out on a Parks on the Air activation. How did it work? Well, we're gonna find out coming up now. What I have here is the Chameleon CHA LEFS 8010 lightweight and fed sloper antenna. Chameleon describes this antenna as an eight band, no tuner, high frequency antenna for use on the amateur radio bands from 10 through 80 meters. It has a minimalistic design and lightweight components, so it is good for all of your outdoor adventures. Chameleon did send me a unit in exchange for a review. A link to this antenna can be found in the video description below. In the package, you're gonna get three components. Uh, the transformer unit with 63 feet of wire attached to an integrated wire winder, a 67 foot piece of wire to extend the antenna to the 80 meter band, and a 50 foot piece of micro 90 paracord. This is an NFED half wave antenna, so the transformer consists of a 49 to one unin. Through the protective covering, you can see the windings on what appears to be a size 240 ferrite. The transformer is mounted onto an integrated wire winder to hold the 63 feet of wire. The wire is 20 gauge copper clad Kevlar with a PTFE insulation. It is very smooth and flexible. Uh, there is a compensation coil about six feet away from the transformer. This is to aid in resonance for the upper bands. Power handling is 500 watts sideband, 250 watts CW, and 150 watts digital. What makes this antenna different is at the end of the wire, you're gonna find it's terminated with a socket. On the included 67 piece of wire, uh, you're gonna find a plug and a carabiner clip. This extends the antenna to a full 130 feet for operation on the 80 meter band. This makes this two antennas in one. You get the basic 10 through 40 meters and fed half wave antenna, which only takes up about 50 feet of space to deploy. And you can add this entire extra piece of wire for uninterrupted operation from 10 meters all the way down to 80 meters. Chameleon recommends two different configurations in which you can deploy the antenna, either as an NFED sloper or an NFED horizontal. The sloper configuration is preferred as it is gonna give you good general purpose communications. The horizontal configuration of the antenna enhances its NVIS or near vertical sky wave propagation. Uh, for this uh, review, I tested the antenna in its basic sloper configuration. To deploy the antenna, the feed point should be elevated at about 25 feet. This will entail using a tree or other support structure to place the feed point at about 25 feet. Once the line is in the tree, unwrap and spread the antenna wire out in the direction it will face. There is some directivity broadside the antenna, so pick a direction along the sides you wish to favor. Next, connect the coax. Now lift the antenna while holding the wire so that the coax end of the antenna doesn't tangle with the wire side. Secure the line and then use a tent stake, which is not included, to secure the other end of the antenna at ground level. Now you're ready to get on the air. To use the antenna in the horizontal position, you'll want to deploy the feed point at about 15 feet of height. Then secure the other end of the antenna at the same 15 foot height so that it is horizontal. This low height will favor the NVIS style propagation of about 100 to 300 miles on the lower bands. To use the antenna as an 80 meter NFED antenna, you will connect the additional 67 foot piece of wire to the end of the antenna. The carabiner clips into the ring for strain relief and then the plug fits into the socket on the main wire. This antenna can be then left in the same sloper configuration with the 25 foot feed point height, and, or you can lift the other end of the antenna for a horizontal NVIS operation. Now, one important note, especially with the horizontal deployment, is that you do not want the wire to be tight or over tensioned. The wire is a 20 gauge copper clad Kevlar PTF covered wire. It is strong, but it is not as strong as heavier gauge wires that you may be more used to. Over tensioning this wire can cause it to break. 
Recovery is similar to deployment. Just perform these steps in reverse. You can wind the paracord and the main antenna wire onto the integrated wire winders. Now let's talk performance. First off, looking at the SWR graph by frequency provided by Chameleon, you can see that the antenna has very good dips on the 40, 20, 15, and 10 meter bands. Measuring the SWR with my analyzer, I found the same to be true. Good SWR on those main bands and a bit higher on 17 and 12 meters. When I added the 80 meter uh, extension, a couple of things happened. First off, there was a pronounced dip at the bottom of the 80 meter band. I believe the resonance was at about 36, 40 kilohertz and SWR climbed to a two to one at 3,800 kilohertz. Even though you get good 80 meter performance, uh, there's just not enough bandwidth and you're gonna need a tuner to use this antenna in the phone portion of the 80 meter band. But also uh, when adding the extension, the SWR for 17 and 12 meters dropped into the good range and bandwidth increased slightly for 40 and 20 meters. Otherwise, performance was very good on 40 through 10 meter band. Uh, the antenna had enough bandwidth to cover 40 meters uh, fine. I noticed that on the 20 meter plot that the resonant point was a bit outside of the band, but SWR was otherwise fine. I don't think this is really a big deal or indicative of a problem. Just remember, every deployment will be different and SWR will shift slightly depending on environmental factors. The important thing to consider is that the antenna delivers reliable performance in a wide variety of situations. As long as your SWR is within the recommended limits of the transceiver, this antenna is going to work fine. For example, I used this antenna on the 80 meter phone without a tuner. Even though my SWR was close to two to one, the radio didn't mind and using just really right down close to about 3,800 kilohertz, I was able to get contacts as close as 100 miles away and as far as the Carolinas. If you want to see and hear more on the air and uh, the signal quality tests of this antenna, please watch my previous uh, Parks on the Air activation at Governor Thompson State Park. It'll provide you, I'll provide you a link for that uh, down in the video description. Now I've been using the original uh, chameleon lightweight and fed sloper antenna for a little over a year and a half and I thought it would be fitting to compare this antenna uh, to the uh, to the newer chameleon uh, 8010. First off the lefts the LEFS both of these models is a very durable antenna uh, I, this one has been um, has provided very rugged performance over the last year and a half and it's going to last a long, and I'm, so I'm, I'm confident that this one, the LEFS 8010, is also well constructed and it's going to last a long time. The obvious difference between the two, other than the lack of the protective covering on my older antenna, uh, it was an early uh, production model, so it doesn't have this, this covering, is that uh, the compensation coil on the original LEFS is closer to the end of the antenna, and on the newer one, they moved it closer to the feed point. Uh, I see no difference in performance in moving the coil. I believe they did that just uh, for, uh, to make it easier uh, for, to add that uh, 80 meter extension. So there's no performance difference in that. Uh, Price-wise, uh, the original LEFS is about $180. Uh, the LEFS 8010 is uh, $225. Honestly, I'd spend the extra money to get the 8010 version just to have um, this extra wire and legitimate uh, 80 meter capabilities. I've used my original LEFS uh, as an 80 meter antenna with a tuner. While it works, you know, it's not the best. Um, it's got some weird, um, uh, you know, weird radiation patterns and whatnot. Uh, so I found that the, uh, the extra wire with the 8010 makes that 80 meter performance so much better. NFED half-wave antennas are quite popular, especially for portable use, and there are many different permutations of this style of antenna available for sale. Performance-wise, they pretty much all work the same. Uh, the defining difference between brand A and brand B is the construction and, not, and the non-RF features of the antenna. Uh, things like how easy it is to deploy, uh, what the quality of components are, and uh, the power rating of the antenna. I think Chameleon hits the mark with its version of the NFED half wave. It's well constructed. Uh, the integrated wire winder is very nice and 
really, it just works as expected. I really like the option of deploying this antenna either with or without the 80 meter segment. Uh, when going portable, you may not have the space for the full 130 feet, or you want, or you may not want to use the 80 meter band. Uh, but leaving it out, you know, still makes uh, this a, a quality of 40 through 10 meter antenna. Although the SWR is just a little bit higher on the se on 17 and 12 meters. If there's anything I don't like about this antenna, is the lack of a wire winder uh, for the 80 meter uh, section. Uh, makes this a little bit harder to deal with. Uh, I had to put some Velcro on here. Otherwise, um, you can make a wire winder, uh, you know, wood one like this, or just buy an inexpensive uh, kite winder. But um, I'd like to see a plastic wire winder included with the package for this accessory wire. So what do you think? Uh, do you have any questions on the Chameleon LEFS 8010? What do you look for in an NFED half-wave antenna? Uh, leave a comment down below. I'd love to see your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video and want to see more reviews like this, well, please hit like and subscribe. Extended content, like an end-to-end -end Parks on the Air activation using this antenna, can be found over on my Patreon page. Uh, but that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day in 73.